In Acts 1711 we read, These were more noble than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily, whether those things were so. So without further ado, let's look into God's Word, the Bible. Good morning. This is uh, devotional number 439, and today's date is April 20th, 2018. We've been looking this week at the subject of the fear of God, and I'd like us to take a look at the supreme example of the fear of the Lord, which the Lord Jesus himself demonstrated by his life of perfect obedience to God the Father. As one contemplates the Bible's teaching concerning uh, what the fear of the Lord produces, one discovers that humility and obedience are important results, as Philippians 2, 5 through 11 illustrate. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself, and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven, and things in earth, and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Please note that these verses preceding Philippians 2, 12 through 13, which is one of the chief passages we have been considering this week, uh, furnishes us with a great deal of information about the fear of the Lord or the fear of God. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God which worketh in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Hebrews 5, 7 also affirms, who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with strong crying and tears unto him that was able to save him from death and was heard in that he feared. With this in mind, let's focus our attention on what the fear of the Lord produces in the life of a believer. The Lord Jesus perfectly exemplified what is also the inheritance of each believer, as found in Isaiah 8, 13. Sanctify Jehovah of hosts himself, and let him be your fear, and let him be your dread. <coughs> Pardon me. <clears throat> Number one, those who fear the Lord will follow the admonition of Ecclesiastes 12, 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. Number two, those who fear the Lord are blessed with children unless they remain unmarried, as Psalm 128 uh, three to four teaches. Thy wife shall be as a fruitful vine by the sides of thine house. Thy children, like olive plants, round about thy table. Behold, that thus shall the man be blessed that feareth the Lord, or feareth Jehovah. Number three, those who fear Jehovah have their prayers heard by God as he saved his elect 
as we read in Psalm 145, verse 19. He will fulfill the desire of them that fear him. He will also hear their cry and will save them. And of course, we have to remember this took place uh, during the day of salvation. Those who fear the Lord are given spiritual food, according to Psalm 111, verse 5. He hath given meat unto them that fear him. He will ever be mindful of his covenant. Number five, those who fear the Lord have the gospel or covenant revealed to them by God through the scriptures. In the words of Psalm 25, verse 14. The secret of Jehovah is with them that fear him, and he will show them his covenant. Number six, those who fear the Lord are under the watchful care of God. He delivered them from spiritual death and destruction and from spiritual famine as well as Psalm 33, 18 through 19 teaches. Behold, the eye of Jehovah is upon them that fear him, upon them that hope in his mercy, to deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. Number seven, those who fear the Lord will never be left in spiritual poverty as Psalm 34, 9 through 10 assures us. O fear Jehovah, all ye his saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek Jehovah shall not want any good thing. Number eight, those who fear the Lord will speak the truth as they continue feeding sheep, as 1 Peter 3.15 points out. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Number nine, those who fear the Lord will be spiritually satisfied. As Proverbs 19.23 asserts, the fear of Jehovah tendeth to life, and he that hath it shall abide satisfied. He shall not be visited with evil. Number 10, those who fear Jehovah will inherit spiritual riches, honor, and life according to Proverbs 22, verse 4. By humility and the fear of Jehovah are riches, honor, and life. Number 11, those who fear the Lord will have a hatred for sin, according to the testimony of Proverbs 8, 13. The fear of Jehovah is to hate evil, pride and arrogancy, and the evil way, and the froward mouth do I hate. Number 12, and lastly, those who fear Jehovah will prolong their days, as we see in Proverbs 10, 27. The fear of Jehovah prolongeth days, but the years of the wicked shall be shortened. 